Welcome back to Gun and Shot TV, and today I was going to tell you about yet another heirloom gun. I've talked about my grandfather's uh, 1911s, um, stuff like that, the video about the one that got stolen and came back years later. So this is another gun that was my grandfather's, and it was another gun that my dad actually gave to my grandfather um, back in the 1960s. Uh, East Germany, or was it West Germany? I think it's West Germany. This is what I get for not uh, preparing. But um, either way, Germany, I'm pretty sure it was West Germany, now that I think about it, um, was importing a lot of guns, cheap, what are now referred to as Saturday Night Specials, or junk guns, or pop metal guns, stuff like that. Um, you'll see like Arminius, Rome, IG, um, and I think IG is actually a acronym, and it stands for like something, something, something German... Whatever, it, it was an importer like FIE or any any of the other ones. So what they were is they were going around and finding cheap junk guns and importing them in mass to the U.S. for very low prices. This example is an IG Model 15, um, E15, pardon. And it is a 22 long rifle copy of a Colt single action army. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and show you a little better detail on it. So zoom in a little bit closer, you can see that it's a um, decent copy. It was it was actually not made, like I said, by IG. That was more of an importer. So this is actually a Huber, Hubert and Schmidt, um, which was an, a German gun maker that they bought from and then imported under their name. If you take off the right grip here, there is a marking by the actual manufacturer. So there may be guns like this that look similar and are branded as egg, but if you look on the frame, you can sometimes find who actually made it. So you can see that this is actually like a chrome plated or nickel plated, and it's starting to come off in various spots here, and it's got some pretty heavy wear. This was a gun that my dad bought from my grandfather as, I think, a birthday present or something, and new in the box in the 60s. He paid $15 for this gun. So obviously there's going to be some quality issues. You can see how... The frame doesn't quite line up with the back strap, and it's it's a pretty janky, poor quality gun, um, but it was made for a price point. Um, as gun control picked up steam in the 60s, a lot of places started banning junk guns or Saturday Night Specials, so it became a question of the metallurgical content of the gun, so a lot of areas banned guns that were made of metal that would melt under 600 degrees or whatever standard. I know Illinois, for example, has a law. So things like Jennings and things like this, I don't think you'd get anymore. I know Heritage Rough Riders um, couldn't, uh, couldn't sell in Illinois. So that impacted the profitability of these guns. So you, you ended up seeing less and less of, of those mega importers still being able to turn a profit importing stuff like this. The gun itself, uh, my grandpa used it quite heavily. He would always have it on the uh, on the couch while he was watching westerns, and he would uh, dry fire it. I've got some snap caps in here, and it does have a standard Colt single action army action with the four clicks back and the half cock and the safety notch. So you can see that there's a bunch of peening around around the cylinder where it shouldn't be because the gun was actually firing out of time. And it's not the greatest action, and if you fan it or, or do stupid things with it, you're going to get that kind of wear. Um, so the gun isn't isn't the best timed example. There's also the fact that it does not actually shoot very accurately. It's limited by the traditional cowboy blade and, and notch sights, but also I just don't think the gun had the most care taken in uh, reaming out the barrel here. So... Um, definitely a neat gun for me just because it's got some historical value or sentimental value that it was my grandpa's and my dad bought it for him. But in actuality, I replaced it with a Ruger Single 6 that is a much better gun that I don't have to worry about breaking. Like this gun is nice, it shoots, um, but it's a junk gun and I'm pretty sure it will wear out if I shoot it all the time. So I'd like to keep it functional on a shelf somewhere. So that pretty much sums up the IG model E15. Um, this is one of the, the only <laughs> true single action army 
um, action guns I have. I have a couple single actions and, you know, Rugers and such, but this is the only one that does the whole C-O-L-T with the four clicks and you have to put it to half cock to get the cylinder to spin to unload it. So it's kind of neat, like I said, all the sentimental stuff. But if you ever find one of these, I wouldn't pay a lot for it, maybe 60 bucks, 100 bucks. Uh, they're not, they weren't quality guns in the day and they certainly aren't any better in quality now that they've had 40 odd years of abuse. So, you know, for the money, over a hundred bucks, I would look strongly at finding something like a Ruger single six or something, you know, the older Ruger flat tops um, have the same, you know, this, I think they're called three screws. They have that same Colt action, but with uh, coil springs and everything, and they're much nicer guns. And if you look around hard enough, you can find those for, you know, maybe 200 to $300 range. So I would spend the money there rather than something like this unless you find it for under 100 bucks. Because like I said, these are not great guns. But they were definitely great for the time. And for 15 bucks new, you know, probably if you adjusted it, it'd be like 100 bucks new. You're looking at something like a Plinkerton or, or something like that. So it's still a place in the market definitely for a gun at that price, new. But like I said, used, I just don't think they're a great value unless it's, you know, an heirloom or something like that. So for Gun and Shot TV, that's my rundown of the IG Model E15 22 long rifle, pistol, peacemaker, clone thing, whatever it is. So thanks for watching.